I'm joined today by Rochelle from the Grand Central Partnership, as well as Terry Howell from the Village Alliance in the Greenwich Village neighborhood. And we're going to talk about 311 data specifically. But before I dive into that, I'm going to give you a quick uh, overview of, of Ginkgo, certainly, and, and what that is. So, so Ginkgo is a platform that we've been building for uh, quite a few years now, since 2017, really, to help local organizations like uh, the Grand Central Partnership and Village Alliance joining us today, uh, really take ownership of their data at the local level and make better use of it for their various you know, workflows to improve neighborhood conditions. Um, you can visit the website, ginkgo.city, uh, to go through a few of the things Ginkgo does quickly here, we have uh, a data platform that's map-based and it uses that framework to organize data in an intelligent way. So if you add things to the map, it's going to know how to relate those things to other records that you're keeping track of. So, you know, adding a business to a building will know which building and property to associate things with. And we use the same type of framework to run some automated workflows as well. So if you're updating a record like a business and changing it from a current tenant to a past uh, tenant or current lessee to a past tenant, you, you automatically make changes to other records in the system that need to know about that change that you've made. So that's really what Ginkgo's core use is. It's about managing records at that local level and helping uh, you know, automate us and, and make these processes more uh, quick and easy for the for the communities that work with Ginkgo. So our goal with Ginkgo overall is just to provide this clear picture of a neighborhood at any given point in time, um, helping with the process of managing places, managing these districts, neighborhoods, commercial corridors, and enabling the groups that do this job to uh, work with data in a, in a more flexible way for that process. So that's Ginkgo. We're going to dive into getting a clear view in particular of through on one data today and how Ginkgo has been uh, providing that data set in the open data portal in a way that makes it a little bit more useful specifically for this type of uh, this type of workflow. So the the tool right now enables uh, enables the users to get these emails, which you can see up on the upper left corner of the screen here, and it will send the data in for every 24 hour period that there are through and one records being updated in the portal. So what I've got in this in these two GIFs here happening is a, a, there's an email coming for an area that I've created for the Hudson Square Business Improvement District. And I'm opening that email up and then clicking on the view area, which takes you to the other GIF, where you can access these records on the map and see you know, uh, what they pertain to. So you put that pin down on one of those dots, which represent these 311 reports, and it is going to give you the information about that 311 complaint specifically. Um, the process of setting this up is pretty easy, and I just want to walk through that before we dive into the discussion. Uh, the, the way Ginkgo makes this data a little bit more accessible specifically for business improvement districts or other sort of district, you know, stakeholders essentially is rather than feeding it to them uh, and giving them access to it in a uh, you know community district or a zip code they're able to set up specific areas on the map that they they care about and certainly you know in this example with the Hudson Square business improvement district they wouldn't necessarily want complaints for you know the community district which you can get from the data um, as is they'd want it specifically drawn out for their specific boundary. So in this example, we're just drawing another little boundary called Hudson Square North and clicking on the subscriptions and you've got the 3 on one alerts automatically subscribing for that boundary. So that's how it ends up creating those emails that are automated on a daily basis and, and sent to anyone who's looking for access to this data. And then going from there, that's kind of where, you know, I think we'll, we'll probably talk the most about what that it is used for today and, and how, the, uh, how the emails drive those use cases. But you can take it further in terms of tracking these issues locally. And I think that's really where the rubber meets the road for a lot of these organizations that um, do this work at the local level is they, they, they use this data as a reference and as an indicator of things happening 
um, that they may or may not be aware of. And that helps them keep track of all of these local records. So in this GIF, what we're doing here is, you know, pinning a location by a 311 complaint and adding a uh, record of that complaint um, if it pertains to something that we want to keep track of locally for the community. And uh, the result of, you know, being able to do this and, and, and keep records uh, on this map this way is, is this ability to kind of automate reports, share information more effectively with your community, with your stakeholders, with your city partners. Um, just a real quick, you know, dashboard uh, of, the, of the neighborhood that Terry is working with. Uh, just to kind of look quickly at how all these things kind of come together into a really clear analysis of conditions week by week, month by month, et cetera. So that's Ginkgo in a nutshell, specifically focused on the 311 data set. And I'm going to start this off with a few prompts for Rochelle and Terry. And I think we'll dive into more of an open discussion after that. But yeah, let's let's get into the discussion section here. So uh, Terry, Rochelle, maybe Rochelle, I'll start with you since you're one down from me on the on the screen here. And uh, just if you could explain what this 311 data set uh, looks like for you on your end when you get into work in the morning and, and how you access it um, and, and you know, the use case in general that you end up okay. having when you interact with this data. Well, what I'll say is I get these emails uh, early in the morning. So I look at them before I even get into work in the morning. And um, they give you an idea of the complaints that have come in from, you know, people in the neighborhood that we might not be aware of. And um, so we so we look at it to see, uh, first of all, if it's something that we can, if there's an issue that we can uh, resolve ourselves, if it's something that falls under our purview or if it's an issue that um, you know we we can follow up on or influence a city agency to help with, and um, that's that's basically what we're looking at. We we look at it. It's it's not me. It's some of my colleagues here that are responsible for other things, um, and uh, you know we use this every single day. It it just. Um, in addition to our own public safety officers and supervisors who are in the field, it lets us know um, things that, you know, it's just another pair of, you know, eyes and ears for problems or issues in the neighborhood. Thank you, terrific. And Terry, I'm sure you'll echo some of the same things Ro just said, but uh, by all means, if you wouldn't mind sharing your experience with this data set so far and how it's helped. Well, it is funny because it is also one of the first things I do when I get up in the morning. It's like it's the first thing that work email I look at. So I know what's been going on. Um, for us, it's a couple things. It also, um, I also know when my security guards, when I've given them a particular issue to always do a 311, that way I know they've done it. Um, so that keeps me uh, in kind of in track in tracks our uh, security guards. Um, there again, I know where other issues are coming from because um, like Rochelle said, you know, other people put in in the three one ones and I always, it, it's a really, really valuable tool for me. Um, it also gives me more conform, com, informed communication with NYPD because then I can say, look, we're not the only ones with this issue. You're getting up three other calls a day on this. So that way it, it helps uh, put some pressure and some extra communication. Then we can also track, you know, where other continuing issues are unresolved. Like I can tell DCWP, wait a minute, we've made a 311 on this every single day for three months and you have not done your part. So it also helps with uh, other city agencies. And then it also uh, sometimes alerts to other conditions like, a broken sidewalk or a sign or a street light or something that I may not necessarily notice. So, you know, all those things have been extremely valuable. That's terrific. Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, in, in your case in particular, you're also using this as a way of reporting 311 issues and making sure that they get reported from your staff and contractors. Um, but in addition to that, you're looking for you know, the community's input about these issues in, in general and making sure that, you know, you're, you're well appraised of 
of uh, where the kind of common um, issues are basically the, the ones that are being reported from your team on the ground, but also from the community in general. Um, yes. yeah. From there, are you using the data uh, to directly communicate with folks in your team or is it is it more um, a communication with the city and, the, and your partners in the government there? Actually both. And also even with property owners or property managers, if there's an issue, then I'm like, look, how you resolve this is you do a 311 every day. Well, then I can look and say, no, you're not. <laughs> We're the only ones reporting this. So you have to step up. If you want to change, you also have to put in some work. It's not, it can't just be us. So then that, you know, so it's communication with pretty much all of our partners. That's good to hear. Excellent. Us, and and I would I would echo that for us also. Whether it's, you know, somebody reporting a graffiti condition that our own, you know, uh, clean team can correct or, you know, some other issue that, you know, we need homeless services assistance with. And it, and um, I, I would I would agree with what Terry was saying. It's we're reporting it, but we also try to to get our stakeholders to report these issues. So there's a record of it for the city to to, to know. That's excellent. Is 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 the record that goes out to uh, three one one helpful in terms of the content you're getting back from the system right now? I know Terry, for instance, you've uh, you know asked us in the past to include addresses, which we've added to the system certainly. But how do you feel about the the data set and the information it provides as of right now. Well, like you said, that's the only complaint I really have is, and it seems like it's been more recently, there's no address on certain complaints and they yes. typically are encampment. And another very strange one is panhandling uh, because that's kind of an unusual 311. Um, uh, so, but I can't get an address. And like yesterday I had six complaints of panhandling but no address. So, and sure. that's, that's been my only issue. That's not, well, that's, that's not very many issues then. That's good. <laughs> but no, that's, that's definitely room for improvement. I think it's, it's, I don't know enough about how the city's uh, system uh, uh, requires addresses, but I would imagine if there was a way to kind of reverse geocode some of these things or get that address into the data set, it would make the, you know, the, the, uh, the utility of it a little bit better for sure. Um, and Ro, I, I know you and I have spoken a little bit in the past about ideas for improving this data set. Um, in particular, I think we had covered the, uh, the idea of, of uh, the frequency of the data and the fact that it's, it's a there's a delay in it, in it essentially, in coming. Yes. So, so um, that, that's one way if we could, if the information could be more in real time, I, 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 I I could be wrong about this, but I think I was told that it's that it, by the time we get it, it may be like 48 hours um, later than it was like it's being reported two days before. Yeah, it's so, at least 24 hours right now. I know that that is the case. It doesn't go up on the portal and get pulled into Ginkgo. Um, it, it's sort of a daily summary of what happened as opposed to. Uh, you know, it, it going up on the data portal immediately, essentially. Right. So, so of course that that would um, be helpful. And then also, I think that um, you know, this is more of an issue where you know we will report this like a, an encampment issue, and then you get that the response back from the from it was that um, you know that you know, whichever city agency went there to attempt to resolve the situation, they they go there and they don't define that as an encampment. So there's like a condition, whether it's, a, you know, maybe a homeless individual with three, you know, shopping carts um, and it gets reported as an encampment and then it's not in, and then, uh, you know, it's been closed out. That's, I think, sometimes the frustrating part that there are, conditions that get closed out and the condition has not been corrected. That's interesting. Yeah, that would be a good opportunity, I think, for the city to get more, I guess, right. updates from folks on the ground about these recurring, it's really a recurring situation. That, it, that and, right. 
And, and just using the word recurring, what's very, very helpful about this is that you do see the recurring situation. So it helps you know like where problem locations may be in the neighborhood. Right, right, of course. I, I know we're working on setting up your dashboard similar to the one that we looked at on the, uh, I don't know if I can go back in the slides here, but sort of similar but, uh, to this. Sorry, to, be, to be kind of, it's also the agency itself. It's not, that, I don't consider that necessarily an issue with Ginkgo. It's an right, issue right. with the city agency itself. Right, it's not and, a Ginkgo issue. No, it's not. I mean, when I call D DCWP in particular, um, you know, when there's an absolute complete violation and then I get a report back that says no violation. Right. And I know there's violations. That's right. not Ginkgo's fault. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. No, no, definitely. I think the, the, the idea here is, is, you know, can we create like sort of a short list of, of uh, ideas for improvement, improving the, the city's data set? Right. And, uh, and yeah, no, definitely. I, I, I could see, you know, both the delivery of the data as an opportunity. Um, I'd also, you know, and I've heard this not, not just from, from working with both of your organizations, but also from other bids that, you know, it was, there was a, if there was a way to streamline the delivery or the reporting of the, of the conditions to the city, I think that could be an opportunity for technology partners like Ginkgo as well. So specifically what I'm referring to there is, you know, if you're tracking local conditions, recurring or otherwise in Ginkgo, could we automate the process of those being sent to the city somehow so that they don't, they don't have to be, you know, entered in two different systems essentially. Um, so those are my three, I think, uh, wish list items <laughs> is more standardization in the address field, um, a better kind of refresh rate or, you know, latency or whatever we call it on the delivery of the data. And, um, and then finally kind of a way to automate or create a, a machine readable, um, you know, an API endpoint for, for posting these things somehow as well. So I think, you know, I'd like to turn this over. Um, certainly, you know, Rochelle and, and Terry, thank you very much for, for sharing some of your thoughts on this. But if there's anyone from the audience that has questions, I'd love to open that up as well. I, I, I won't be able to stay on the call uh, or, or keep this meeting going for that matter much past 1130. So I'd like to turn it over to the audience now and, and see if anyone has any questions for us about this in general. So we've got a question from Lori. Um, is there more to Ginkgo slides than what's currently on the screen? Absolutely, yes. Uh, Ginkgo, the, the, the 311 data set is, is simply the uh, uh, open data set we're talking about for this particular use case. But as I'm sure Terry and, and Rochelle can, can uh, back me up on, there's a lot more you can do with Ginkgo to manage data locally for a community. Um, we break the platform into Two sides generally, one is more for the operations and the streetscapes and the public realm. The other side's more for the real estate and tracking conditions of commercial space. Um, but the 311 data set is particularly helpful, I'd say, for the, the, uh, the open, you know, the, the public space workflows. Um, it does overlap a little bit, certainly like, like Terry and Rochelle have said, you know, they, they do overlap with their engagement with building owners and businesses. And particularly during the pandemic, there are a number of mayor's office uh, complaints for, I think, compliance with open restaurants, and open streets. And uh, in some cases, I think the, the business improvement districts were able to go out and discuss the issue with the business and resolve it before a fine was, um, was uh, levied on the business or the owner. Does that, does that answer your question, Laura? I'd be happy to share more about Ginkgo in general uh, anytime, certainly. Are there any other questions from the audience as far as 311 data? And I mean, ideas for that matter too. I'd love to hear if anyone else is working with this data set and, and, uh, and ask you. Well, Star, I mean, I, I was only asked to speak on the 311 aspect of this, right. but <laughs> also track all of our vacancies. And you know, if I have an issue with the building, then I can immediately go in. I can find the property manager. I can find the property owner. I can usually have an email or a phone number. So that's a whole nother um, data set that, that I didn't even mention. Right. That's true. And I, and you, you know, there, there is, 
the idea behind a lot of this, thank you, Terry, is that there's overlap with all these things. So having the three on one data in the same system where you're managing business records and, and property owner records and so forth is just a way to streamline a lot of these local operations and, and communications. Um, I've got a question from Allison. Uh, are you tracking the three on one requests? Uh, can you also track the timing of the case close out date rates by NYPD in particular? We don't do a lot of the analytics on three on one data. Really, we're using most of the open data that comes into Ginkgo, um, three on one and property data, and pretty much everything we pull in is really just there for reference. So, when it comes to kind of looking at that data set and running an analytics on it, um, we don't do very much of that. We, we certainly could, as, as I think, you know, anyone with a good Cardo account or Tableau could, could do. Um, but we focus on really just making sure that we provide these updates and, and kind of give a better ear to the ground, basically, on some of these data set changes on a daily basis or, or better basis if we could. Um, oh, sorry. Is, is, are, is everyone seeing the, the slide with discussion on it right now? Ro, Terry, can you, are you, which slide are you all seeing? Are you seeing a slide that says discussion? Yes. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure I hadn't screwed up the presentation <laughs> in the 11th hour here. No, no, it says discussion. Great. Um, are there any other questions about the 311? And I mean, by all means, ideas, because I think definitely this is in the spirit of just sharing thoughts for how we can improve open data and, uh, and make it more accessible here. Well, very good. I think, you know, I've got a few more minutes before 1130. Um, so I'll just use that to kind of wrap up and, and say thank you again. Um, if anyone has any final questions, feel free to fire them off into the chat and we can uh, address them. But I think this has been terrific. I want to thank Terry. Thank you very much, Rochelle. I know you guys kind of did this a little bit last minute with me. So uh, very gracious of you to, to join this conversation. and. And yeah, I look forward to, um, you know, continuing this conversation with anyone interested. I'll drop my email in the chat here so you can reach out directly. And uh, infrastructure complaints. So another question about uh, tracking complaints across community districts. Um, yes, the, uh, we, we, we actually had another subscription that was tied to the, uh, the city's Department of Buildings uh, permit applications. And it's probably a, another open data conversation or <laughs> presentation altogether, but that subscription had to be uh, discontinued because the date field in that data set was changed to a string instead of a, a date format. So we no longer were able to kind of send regular morning emails about building permit applications. Um, but that was our other subscription. So yeah, there your point, Allison, is great. There, there are a lot of other data sets out there. Um, we just canvassed the three-in-one data set in particular, but you know, I think that's definitely a goal in general is to open up more and more of these open data subscriptions. And, and really, again, the, the, the thing that we focus on with Ginkgo is the ability to work with this data at a very specific geospatial capacity. So you're looking at a business district, a couple of blocks, a street corridor, things that you wouldn't usually get out from get out of that data set without opening it up on a map and, and running that kind of analysis on it. Um, so yeah, I, if I, if we do add more of these open data sets to Ginkgo, uh, you know, follow our, our social media or, you know, our blogs and, and we'll, you'll be sure to get updates on that for sure. We, so we're a software as a service company. Um, yeah. A question about how we partner with, city agencies and, and our, so we, we provide a software as a service platform for business improvement districts and other community organizations specifically. And uh, it's, a, it's a typical kind of SaaS arrangement where it's monthly or, or annual fees for that. Um, and otherwise, you know, working with city agencies like the Small Business Services Agency, which does a lot of work with the bids through their neighborhood development group, um, you know, we're sort of a partner for, uh, some of the, the thinking that goes into how to work with stakeholders in the ground better and, and access data about neighborhoods in a more analytical format, essentially. So we've been, we've been able to kind of partner with them on the delivery of programming, such as uh, the Neighborhood 360 program, where they, they have equipped interns to go into specific commercial districts and um, or commercial corridors and help you know, 
collect data on the on the on the ground. So things like vacancy and, and the mix of businesses, um, conditions of public realm assets, and so forth. But yeah, by and large, we are a provider of a service, and we and we focus on our our clients, the business improvement districts, to, to helping them uh, work with this technology and and ultimately improve how they're serving their their stakeholders, their local property owners and businesses. Thank you, Carrie, for nudging me on that. Any other questions? Excellent. Well, thanks again, uh, Terry and Roe for joining us. And thank you everyone for jumping on this short presentation about three in one data. And yeah, I'd love to keep the conversation going with anyone who's interested and in continuing that further um, about three on one, certainly, or anything else, Kinko and city services related. I think that's it. So Carrie, any, do, you, do you need to say any final remarks or is that? Yeah, no, I just want to thank you for the service because it really is an extremely valuable tool for me. Oh, um, great to hear. Terry. I'm, dire I'm director of operations. So, you know, we have 44 blocks to keep track of. So, you know, we have awesome sanitation guys and security guys, but yeah, this is this is what I know that the public is also complaining about. So it's really, really important. So thank you. You know, that's a really I'm glad you you mentioned that I I I kind of overlooked the uh introduction of your both of your districts and and how substantial, you know, these footprints are in the city. So um yeah, yeah the Village Alliance is 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 you know the, the stretch of Eighth Street and and then some other corridors along with it and, you know, Astor Place. So very active areas in, in the city. And, and Ro, if you wouldn't mind actually just sharing a little bit of a quick. Well, <laughs> our, 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 our footprint is, you know, from 35th Street to 54th Street, from 2nd Avenue to 5th Avenue. So, you know, it's uh, quite a huge area. So that's why um, for us too, as Terry mentioned, it's really an invaluable tool because, you know, it's not, we 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 we're out there and we see what we see, but um, it's really very helpful to know what people, what, what people in the neighborhood may be complaining about so we can help to get those issues resolved. So I, I, I agree with Terry, it's really an invaluable, um, tool and you know star as as we're working to even expand on um you know what ginkgo is doing and 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 helping us and it's just you know really a terrific terrific tool that's good to hear. yeah thank you it uh, you know we're talking about very large areas of the city certainly um and i think you know just as important as the size of them is how active they are so having tools to help keep track of all of these rapidly changing conditions on the street and parts of New York is, is really kind of what we're, we're focused on doing here. Well, great. I think that's, that's uh, probably it. Thank you, Carrie, for helping us wrap up. And again, thanks to everyone joining, especially to Rochelle and Terry for, for sharing their experience here with us.